What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. And if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now I know it's been a while since we uploaded a video and I gotta be honest with you guys, we have been slammed. Since this virus is kinda going away, we have been slammed with classes. We've been slammed with salvage work and underwater recoveries, which is actually what we're going out to do today. And we're actually going out to look for a firearm. A local fisherman was here in the area and he had dropped one of his handguns in the water while he was trying to anchor his boat up. So we're gonna go out and help him. But what I want you to focus on this video is not only the search techniques that we use, but the, the procedures that we go through to actually return that firearm to its rightful owner. It's not as simple as just locating a firearm, coming up and handing it. We actually have to go through the right routes, meaning we've got to contact law enforcement. They've got to be able to run the serial numbers on that just to make sure that it's not lost or stolen from anybody other than, of course, the rightful owner or to also make sure that it's not been used in a crime. So with that being said, we got to get up the lake. We're about 20 minutes late compared to what I told the guy we'd be up there, but we've got to get up the lake. We're going to find out exactly where it's at, do a good search pattern, and then, of course, hopefully we'll find the gun to him and get it back to him. With that being said, let's get on up the lake. All right, guys, so I wanted to commentate through this as we've kind of been doing in a lot of our search and recovery videos just to give you a little bit uh, better understanding what it is we're doing underwater and hopefully this video is going to be educational for you as well So basically here we're just getting ready. We're fixing to make our entry. We're doing our final gear checks uh, Making sure we've got all the equipment that we need to uh, thoroughly do a good investigation when we're underwater or a search um, So I'm gonna be the first diver going in here. So once we've done our gear checks I'm just gonna do a rollback entry straight off the boat uh, The particular vessel that we're on that's the easiest way to get out of this one is a simple rollback You'll notice that my metal detector is there in the, um, in the floor of the boat. I'm not going to worry about it during my entry. That's what the other diver is going to do. He's going to hand it down to me once I uh, get in the water, make sure that my equipment's adjusted properly, make sure I do my weight check. Everything that you're pretty much learned or that you are taught in the open water course, that's basically what we're doing here. Um, but here he's going to hand it down to me. I'm going to, you know, just re-verify everything sealed up the way it is, make sure everything's in good working order, get it set before I make my descent. Um, just just to make sure that we can make this search as thorough as possible and as safe as possible as well. And we want it to be successful. All our searches, we want to be successful, obviously. So here I'm just getting my metal detector, get my earphones put on, make sure I get the volume set just right, uh, get the sensitivity, all that set right. And then, of course, he will make his entry. We will develop a game plan. Now, the first thing that we're going to do here is we've already ran this area for sonar uh, just to see what was down at the bottom. And that helps us a lot um, by helping us to determine what's going to be the best search pattern for us. Now, we did see a lot of heavy returns, a lot of real bright returns on it, what we are assuming to be rocks, some other types of debris possibly. So we're going to go down and we're going to do a really quick investigative dive. This is going to be maybe 30 seconds to a minute just to see what's in the area. Now, them little orange floating buoys that you see there, Basically, those are just bass buoys that fishermen use. Sometimes we'll use uh, big bumper buoys with lines and anchors attached to them. We just use that to mark our general search area as well, and it gives us a good reference point when we're under there. So we're going down on one now, and we're just doing an investigative search just to see what's in the area so that we can come up with a good methodical dive plan or a good methodical search to make our search even more successful. So as we go down here, I'm just checking the depth, checking the temperature, checking the visibility, everything that you would do pretty much on any search and recovery diver to be honest with you any dive in general 
But as I'm going down, just making a slow, safe descent. Now I am, I did start in that vertical position, but just like every other dive, you want to get into that horizontal trimmed out position and make your descent that way. Uh, the reason we do that, especially in a lake like this, there's a lot of silt and stuff that can be stirred up and you don't want to come down and, and let your feet hit like that because you're just going to stir up the visibility. Now, one thing that we do have going for us on this dive is we are in a pretty decent current. It's probably three quarters to a knot current so anything that we stir up, it's just going to be blown behind us. So we are starting our search, say, a little bit downstream of where uh, where the uh, person said he, he had lost his firearm. And that way, if we do stir up anything, it's going to be brushing behind us as we search upstream. So here I'm just making sure everything's good with my metal detector. I'm just doing a really quick sweep of the area just to see what's down there. Uh, and like I said, yes, we're searching for the firearm at this point in time, but we're also just searching the general area just to see what's there so that we can just de really determine what's going to be our best search pattern for the particular dive. So you'll see I'm just kind of sweeping back and forth a little bit, just, you know, in the hopes I do happen to come across it. Uh, and two, I can set the sensitivity of the metal detector as well. So if I don't want to pick up bottle caps and things like that, I want big, heavy metal objects uh, or larger metal objects, I can actually set the sensitivity, which is uh, kind of what I'm doing here. You'll see me sweep back and forth, and I'll reach up and I'll set it and things like that. And then once again, I'm just taking notes of what's there. You know, what debris in the area. I think here in a minute, I'll come across a, a brush pile. Uh, so I'm making a mental note of where that's at. I'll look down at my compass, see what direction it is compared to what direction I started in. And then of course, I'm gonna meet back up with my other diver and then we can surface together and formulate a good dive plan. Um, anytime you do searches like this, I can't stress this is enough. This is not a typical search and recovery. Yes, the search patterns that we're using, things like that, are that's what you're going to learn during your search and recovery course. But this is a firearm that we're going after. This is not something that we can just locate and immediately give back to the person who hired us. Uh, we have to go through the proper authority. So we want to be safe uh, when we do this. We want to make sure that we do not contaminate any of the evidence as well. Um, let's say the firearm is stolen or it was used in a crime. Well, if we find it and we don't take proper care to preserve that evidence, well, then we can be charged criminally with tampering with that evidence as well. So we want to do everything that we can to preserve it. So here I'm talking to the, my other diver up the surface. We're talking about uh, what we noticed under there, all the debris, what type of search pattern is going to work good. Uh, you'll actually see a little bit of the current drift there. Where, like I said, we're in about a half knot to a full knot of current, um, which we can use that in this situation for our advantage or in our advantage. Um, so we're just talking about how we're going to sweep, how we're going to use a reel to do this, uh, what each diver's role is going to be. Um, and I'm also explaining to the gentleman that hired us for this particular uh, search and recovery what it is we're doing. You know, I, I try my best to always explain our actions, how we're going to do things, just so that they have a better understanding of what we're doing. Because a lot of people think, you know, this is super easy. You jump in, you go down, you pick it up, and you come up. And sometimes they can get frustrated if things don't work out the way they think it should or if you don't locate the object just immediately. So I'm trying to explain my actions to him as well. And, and he worked with us. He, he didn't have any issues with anything that we did. Um, and he was actually interested in what, what we were doing as well. So uh, he, he wanted to learn. So I tried to explain that to him on the surface as well. But here we're making our second descent down. We've already got our uh, game plan in, if you will, or our search plan of what we're going to do. And instead of doing a circle search around our um, drop line here, around our, our center point of our search area, we, we got a pretty good idea. It's not behind us. It's somewhere that's going to be in front of us. So I'm going to start over here on the right-hand side, and I'm going to make a 180 sweep, and then I'm going to extend out five feet based off visibility and make another 180 sweep and back and forth. And we're just going to do a fan pattern in front of us and not really worry about what's behind us. So here uh, is the weight for our downline or our reference line, if you will. And I'm just kind of moving it over a couple of feet, trying to get it wedged up against that rock. And that way, um, as I'm searching, as I'm sweeping, my pivot man is not going to mess that search area up or mess up that reference line. So I'm just kind of pushing it up against a rock here. And he can actually lay on this rock, and it makes it very easy for him to sweep along with me and just be a pivot man. So he's going to get everything ready. And we are going to 
Go ahead and get our reel deployed here. Now this is just a, a standard cave reel, if you will, or a rec reel. Um, I'm just gonna let out a little bit of line. Now I need to create a loop in the end for my hand to go in, so that's what I'm gonna tie off real quick here. Um, and I'm just using a standard square knot, making me a loop, tight knot. You can use whatever you want. Most of my reels will already have a loop in the end of it. This one, um, I hardly ever get to use unless I'm doing some type of recovery like this. So it's usually not pre-tied. So just tie me a, a quick little loop in it there. Making sure everything's good once again with my metal detector. I'm going to signal my buddy that I'm going to start to search. And I'm going to start on my right hand side because that's where my metal detector is. So basically my hand's going to be extended here. My arm's going to be extended here with the metal detector. And I'm going to sweep as I continue to sweep and pivot around him. And of course I'll go all the way around, let out five feet and come back. Now, thankfully, when uh, the client that hired us here, when he lost his firearm, he was very smart and he marked it on his sonar. So it did not take us very, very long to actually come across it here. And you, you should see it come on camera or on the screen here in just a second. Um, I barely caught a glimpse of it with, with my um, face there or with my eyes. And then, of course, I swept the metal detector over it just to verify that's what it was. It was actually just a little bit out of my reach and I had to pull a little bit on the string. But watch, after I verify that's what it is and I pick it up, I'm gonna signal to my buddy, I'm gonna give him three quick pulls to let him know that I've located that object. And then I'm gonna swim back to him as he's winding up. There you'll see, I told him that I was okay. I gave him an okay symbol. He signaled okay as well. I showed him that we did find the target that we were after. Now, this I can't stress enough. If you're not used to handling firearms, your best bet in this situation is simply mark it, shoot a buoy up on it, and leave it be. If it's something that you are not comfortable handling, then by all means, don't even pick it up. Uh, I've spent a career in law enforcement. I've been around firearms and, and guns my entire life. I own you know, quite a few guns myself. Um, I've shot in competitions. I've shot obviously in law enforcement and things like that. So it's something I am very comfortable with. But now let's talk about the investigative side of this. Now, this was not a typical investigation where law enforcement calls us out. This was just a gentleman who was out on the lake and he had accidentally dropped his gun in the water. And so there are still steps that I take to preserve evidence. First thing I wanna do is make sure that firearm is safe. So once we get all of our equipment in place and where it needs to be and we're winding the reel back up, I'm actually gonna to check to see if it's loaded. Now there are several different ways to do this. Um, but the safest way by all means is if it's a semi-auto like this, you're going to drop the magazine and you're going to open the chamber up to see if there's anything in there. And like I said, if you are not comfortable handling firearms and this is something you shouldn't be doing, simply mark it, come up to the surface and of course notify the, the proper authorities or uh, say some type of uh, firearm professional who can come and get it for you as well. Uh, but obviously I've, I've got plenty of experience with firearms. So once we get all this, I'm going to check to make sure that um, it's unloaded and that way it's safe for us to handle and of course safe for him to handle as well once we, once we hand it back to him. I'm also taking note of the serial numbers here and obviously I've got a camera to document that. But if I didn't have a camera, I would write the serial numbers down on the slate, things like that because if I found myself in a situation where I needed to leave it on the bottom and mark it to where it wouldn't go nowhere or place it in an area where it couldn't go nowhere, I'd still have the information of what the make, the model, the caliber, and even the serial number is so that I can notify the appropriate authorities on the surface to, to, you know, to run it to find out. But here I noticed that the magazine did have rounds in it. And then of course, what I'm gonna do, uh, I check the chamber indicator there to let me know whether it's uh, got around in the chamber. And depending on the make and model of firearm, you can't always trust that. So I'm still gonna rack the slide. So I remove the magazine yet again, keep it pointed in a safe direction, open up the chamber, notice that there's nothing in there. Now I am gonna go ahead and replace the magazine, but at this point, it's gonna get reholstered. The chamber's not gonna be um, opened up for any reason, so there's no chance of it getting reloaded. And the reason underwater I did this as well, putting the magazine back in, it's just easier to handle with that. I don't have to deal with a metal detector, a firearm, a holster, a magazine, uh, a reel, and come up the line. I've got other things to worry about other than this particular firearm. And considering I just did a safety check on it, I feel pretty confident that I can bring it up with a loaded magazine in it, as long as there's not one in the chamber and still be safe. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and make our ascent. 
And then, of course, once we get to the surface, uh, we will go ahead and contact the local law enforcement agency in our area. Uh, the other diver that happens to be with me is a sworn officer, so it was very easy for us to run this firearm to see um, if it was reported stolen or used in a recent crime or anything like that. But once we get to the surface, we were going to keep it in our possession until we are notified by law enforcement that it is safe uh, to give back to the rightful owner, if you will and that it's not stolen or reported lost or anything like that or even used in a crime. But yeah, very, very successful surge. Uh, he actually yeah, like dropped said, the buoy, the little fishing buoy there. You can see he dropped it within 10 feet of it. As you notice, my very first sweep around, it, it was less than 10 feet and we was able to locate it. So very, very successful surge, a very safe surge, a very methodical surge. And if you're doing things like this, even if you're not looking for firearms, if you'll follow these steps, your searches will be much more uh, successful as well. But here, this is where we're checking to see if it's stolen. He's on the phone with um, with his department actually to see if it's stolen and it of course it's not and then Good of course deal. we give it back to him. Yeah, when I dropped that anger I didn't see it. So all I see is something just popped I yeah. got my phone and I got my phone. I still got my phone there. I looked in my time. Yeah, don't drop your phone. We'll have to go after it too. Yeah. Here you go. Hold on before you untie us because I'm going to give you that information. I'm just pulling us in so I can give it to you. Okay. There you go, brother. Thank you. Keep it a little more secure and Maybe get you a dry bag or something to put it in while you're on the boat. Usually I just put it down here too, but totally forgot, forgot about it too. Yeah, but yeah, definitely check out Spring Road Gun Club. Give them guys a call. Uh, uh, ask for Jack. Candy, uh, gun they, they'll tear it down completely uh -huh. part by part. Okay. Uh, just tell Jack, uh, Jack that the scuba shop sent you. Uh -huh. and he'll take really good care okay. of you. And I appreciate you uh -huh. calling us. Oh, I'm glad we could help you, you out. Yeah, I, it's driving in. Just lost for a bit too, not knowing what to do, and I kept thinking about scuba diving and all that. And yeah. he, uh, my uh, brother-in-law said that some people went out there to uh, 73 scuba diving. I think a scuba diving search for, and then yep. somehow yeah, just down the road, so got pretty Good lucky. Deal. Man, I'm gonna give you a card of ours. That way, you'll have our direct contact, uh -huh. and I'll send you some some footage that we got as well. Uh -huh. But make sure you call Jack and get that thing cleaned out. Okay. All right, brother. Thank you. All right, guys, so we just got finished up. We had a very, very successful search. You know, if searching for items underwater is something you want to do, please go out and get proper training for it. And if you're looking for items like this, such as a firearm or something like that, please make sure that you go through the proper authorities. Now, this gentleman seemed pretty legit, but we didn't know him. He literally called us up on the phone and asked if we'd come look for a handgun that he lost in the water. So when you do stuff like that, you're not going to immediately give it back to them. you got to make sure you go through the right authorities, call local law enforcement, get them to come out. And in all reality, you probably shouldn't be the one releasing it back to them. You should release it to law enforcement. As most of you guys know, a lot of the guys that work for me are local law enforcement, so we've kind of got an end there. But you want to make sure that you protect yourself. That gun could have been reported stolen. It could be used in a crime. And now, if I was to release that to him, then, of course, I'm going to be an accessory to that crime as well. So please make sure that you're staying safe when you're out there. If you're not comfortable handling a gun, simply mark it underwater and then get a professional to come out there and get it for you. But guys, I really appreciate you coming on this video with me. If you got any questions, please drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Guys, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.